today we're going to be looking at the 2013 Total Soldier Buckshot version 1. Now Buckshot is what I consider part of the Craptastic Four and I would say he's the leader because he actually has more articulation than the other guys. So why don't we take a closer look at the leader of the Craptastic Four, Buckshot version 1. This is the 2013 Core Total Soldier Buckshot Version 1. Buckshot came out in the previous line of the Core Total Soldier, and to me, he kind of reminds me of G.I. Joe's ambush. I think it's the helmet and the mustache, because these two really don't look alike. I got two Buckshots, and they came in a three pack alongside Ogre and Snakebite. And the other version of Buckshot came as a driver of the Titan Tank. Looking good there, Buckshot. Now we'll take a look at Buckshot's accessories. First we have this knife. That's a fine looking knife. Next we have this revolver. I've always been a big fan of revolvers. And honestly, these two are my favorite weapons in the core series. Now we'll take a look at Buckshot's articulation. Buckshot has a swivel at the neck, so it can move from side to side. His arm can go all the way around, and so could his other arm. His legs can go up about that far, and back down. And that's about it! Now we'll take a look at Buckshot's biography. We can find his biography the same place we can find the rest of the Core's biography, thecorehq.com. Codename, Buckshot. Real name, Austin Colt. He is part of the Flying Force Specialized Air Assault Unit. His primary skills, aviation expert and aerial stunt pilot. Born in Houston, Texas to a brilliant aeronautical engineer, he learned at a young age to repair jet-powered aircraft. He had a passion for flying and always felt more comfortable in the sky, so on his 18th birthday, he enlisted in the Air Force as a combat pilot. The Air Force felt his abilities would be best suited for their special top-secret aeronautics division where his skills both as a pilot and engineer would help create the most advanced aircrafts the world has ever seen. The Corps assessed his skills and experience and recruited Buckshot to head the Flying Force team. Flying Force had never been the most technologically advanced branch of the Corps, but with their pending drone attacks, the Corps needed his help to beef up their aerial presence. Buckshot is now designing and building innovative aircrafts for the team and never misses an opportunity to get into the fray and shoot down the cursed aerial drones. You get them, Buckshot. Now we'll take a look at Buckshot's features. He does have this helmet and he has a strap around it with what looks like a camera. He has these orange tinted glasses and a really messed up mustache that's not really painted all that great and that's with uh, both of my buckshots and also with uh, my buddy Dan Classic he has him and same thing he does have a couple of pouches here and on right here on the bottom name tag that's orange don't eclipse looks like he has a derringer right there with a pocket and then a strap that goes up. It looks like he might be wearing a bulletproof vest. The straps continue down his back and they come down. So it's some kind of a web gear that's just connected to him. It's probably because he's a pilot. His belt, we can see, has a few clips there. And we come back up here and we can see he has a strap with a pocket on his arm. Then he has a little bit of a Velcro there and then he's wearing gloves. On the other side, it's more of the same. Same pocket and uh, straps. Coming down some Velcro to put, help everything stay together. And some gloves. Going down his legs, he does have that web gear for his parachute. Kind of wish he came with a parachute. He has a pocket on his pants. And these aren't really knee pads, but it's, he has some kind of a design here. I don't know, it's kind of strange. Then he has some straps holding everything together. Then he does have a strap back here. On this leg he does have a pocket right there. 
and something. <laughs> Not sure what that is. Looks like some kind of a padding or I don't know. Just it's just texture. And he also has a strap to hold everything in. And I'm I'm sure that's like a pilot thing. So his you know his blood doesn't rush down to his legs or something. And over here he does have another pocket, and I believe that's the pocket where he would keep uh, any coordinates. And he is wearing it looks like sneakers. I know they're boots, but look at that. That kind of looks like he's wearing sneakers because of the paint right there. This mold was done in 2013. So what you're saying is that Buckshot is in charge of all of these guys. I don't know about that. To me, this looks a little bit better. And that's mainly because of the obvious jacket on Spade. And also the eye patch that kind of, you know, brings them up a little. But Buckshot really... I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd want, uh, you know, the leader of the Craptastic Four to be in charge of uh, the air team here. Also, look at his mustache. That's just not that great. I mean, it's all fuzzy on one side, and the other side, it's kind of flat, or maybe that's just a paint. But either way, every mustache I've seen for every buckshot looks really weird. And I don't think that's how the leader should be treated. Personally, although Buckshot is part of the Craptastic Four, he isn't that bad compared to the others. I mean, his legs can move, and there's kind of a charm to him. And again, I think it might be his mustache, or maybe it's because he's like this old-timey safari guy. Like Van Pelt, the hunter from Jumanji. I don't know. I like him, and I think that's that he's the best that the Craptastic Four has to offer. I think in order from the best to the worst, it would have to be Buckshot, followed by Reaper, and then we have Recoil, and the winner of the Rotten Turkey Award definitely goes to Dozer. Now why does Reaper get number two? Well, I was talking to Dan Classic, and he brought up a good point. None of the other characters can actually have that pose that he has. And that's pretty cool. You could just have him on your desk. He's also kind of an army builder, so you can have a whole bunch of him. Recoil, the only points he really has are his guns, because other than that, he's just like Dozer. And the reason why Dozer is the worst is, well, just look at him. He is a mockery of Solid Snake. He has that knife that's bent that's on his chest, and then the caution signs on his armor, like, why is that even there? Like, why? What is somebody gonna don't step on my leg? I don't know. Like, I, I don't get it. Not only that, but I mean, he has a kickstand to help him up. Even though he has the kickstand, I don't know how many times I tried to get him to stand up and he falls over so easily. Bazooka obsessed. Dozer is definitely a waste and he shouldn't be on here. From this picture of the next series, it looks like we're gonna get Buckshot again. And for me, that's okay. And I'm saying okay, I'm not saying that's great. Well, only because I do kind of like Buckshot a little bit. The thing is about Buckshot, uh, maybe he needs some new color scheme because he's been like this since Total Soldier. I hope you enjoyed my review of the 2013 Core Total Soldier Buckshot version one. And stay tuned, as next time, we're gonna take a look at the first response helicopter with a uh, very special guest. Buckshots. The Corps assessed his skills and experience and recruited Buckshot to head up. The Corps assessed his skills and experience. Flying Force had never been. Flying Force had never been the most technologically advanced. Flying Force had never been the most technologically. Flying Force has never. <sighs> Flying Force had never been the most. Flying Force had never been the most technologically. 
Flying Force had never been the most technologically and uh, Flying Force had never been the most technologically advanced branch of the Corps. 